Hey, hey, what do you do? What's up? Your girl G here and welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to come and talk to you guys really super fast about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Um, this episode kind of was another filler episode that I know I missed last week and so I didn't want to miss two in a row so that's why I'm coming to talk to y'all about this really fast because your girl gotta go and get her hair did it is the roots y'all know when the roots come in they, they gotta get they gotta get done because things get dangerous when the roots start getting thick so I'm gonna come and talk to y'all about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills um and also my follow-up with Life After Lockup um and then as well come back and talk about a couple of things um uh, martel Holt, y'all know he got arrested and i guess there was a statement put out in regards to him and things like that so yeah there's a lot to come and talk to you guys about so let's start with real housewives of beverly hills um i watched the episode like one and a half times um so if i miss anything y'all just drop it down in the comments so let's get into it we open up the episode with kyle and her fancy schmancy house y'all know she lived real lavish over there with mauricio um but she is doing like a little birthday situation for Anne Marie now y'all Anne Marie I think she just stepped her foot in it I think she stepped her foot in it and how she you know made entry into um Beverly Hills I just think she got caught up in the rookie mistake of starting an unnecessary battle one um two maybe forcing you know situations that you know wouldn't naturally just happen i just think she got caught up and i feel bad for her because they are ripping her a new one on the internet um yeah emory you ain't gonna make it especially after this episode tonight yeah girl you you you're not gonna make it but nonetheless it's emory's birthday kyle is doing something for her she wants to go to like a vineyard a wine place um and hopefully it's a nice good evening is what she's hoping after everybody's you know been going at each other's necks for a little bit um so everybody shows up uh y'all know Sutton and Garcelle is besties they rode over there together um Sutton wants to know how things went with Dorit and long story short Garcelle was like I'm just gonna make the choice to move on because trying to talk more with Dorit you're only gonna get more nowhere because at the end of the day Dorit I think just does not understand she does she lives in her bubble the Dorit you know privileged white woman bubble and it's not a problem that you're a privileged white woman Dorit nobody's mad at you about that but you do have to be aware of how other people live and I think Dorit is was so scared like I because y'all know last week I didn't even get a chance to talk about it so I'll just do a quick little one too um Garcelle talked to Dorit about the whole you know you attacked me situation and I think Dorit one of the problems with having these housewives when it's typically is a white woman and a black woman joins immediately all the white women get like on guard on eggshells because it's like I don't want to say the wrong thing the last thing I want is black twitter coming from me or coming for me I don't want them to think that I'm racist like that's literally all the white women's fear that's what happened on uh Roni okay Ramona will hold Trump politicking ass um y'all know she goes for for the, for the orange Cheeto with a toupee um Ramona wasn't here for you know Ebony joining now Ebony the type of person she was definitely wasn't good for the show but in general the thought of a black woman entering a white space they definitely you know start acting a little different and so I think Dorit is literally almost she's almost digging herself a hole of what the whole she was trying to avoid in the first place which was to come off as a Karen a racist white woman so it's like the more Garcelle is educating Dorit that she's doing those things she's battling Garcelle to say no I'm not doing those things you can't tell me I'm doing those things because I I you know I'm I'm not racist because essentially what Garcelle said in that dinner you know Dorit was like oh would you saying that you know 
it implies that I'm a racist and I'm, you know, that is a very, you know, strong and hurtful thing to say. And it's like, that's what Dorit's concern and worry was from the get-go. She does not want to be perceived as racist. And nobody's calling you racist, Dorit. But Garcella hit the nail on the head when she was like, there is there is an unconscious Karen behavior. And the, it's emphasis on unconscious because a lot of white people have ways that they are not aware of because everybody's downloaded with the same program of white supremacy. Um, you know, and so you live in that world, Doree, but like Doree said, she's like, you know, I like <laughs> Garcelle to remind her, like, Doree, you know, not everybody lives like you. And she's like, it's a privilege life. She was like, yeah, I'm privileged too, but like, I'm still living a different life than you as a black woman. And that's all I'm trying to get you to understand. Dorit is not hearing how living life as a black woman, even though although privileged, like, you know, Dorit's like, well, we're both privileged. Yes, but a privileged white woman and black woman are two different things. I'm a black woman. I'm telling you the experience of, you know, being around you and Dorit is just not trying to hear it. Um, but nonetheless, I went off on a tangent Nonetheless, Garcella said no. Yeah, um, I, you know it's just gonna be where it's at because it's you. Dorit is just not going to give in, and it's like uh, Dorit. It's okay to be like, you know what? I really did understand. I understand now. Like, educate me. Dorit is so scared to say, "Oh my God, educate me," because she thinks that implies that she is internally racist everybody's a little bit racist and like everybody got some ways about them that is just like a little bit racist it's okay not that it's like, not that it's you know um menacing or not that it's um you know intended for some you know some things are intentional with the racism but other times everybody just subconsciously has their views of each race um yeah, Dari, we we can only hope and pray that you, by the reunion, have educated yourself. Because like ourselves said, it ain't her job. And it's not black people's job to constantly remind white people how you live a different life than us. <laughs> but yeah, she basically, Garcelle told Sutton, like, it is what it is. So they all get there. Um, um, Erica can't come because she's sick. So they all get on the bus and this is when Sutton tells them about um, her dates. Okay, she finally broke her curse because the date, um, you know, went good. He definitely wasn't talking about his mama, you know, 24-7. So that was a plus. Um, you know, he had a, you know, nice, soft, boyishly light hair. Uh, that's from my, <laughs> I'll say one of my favorite lines from um, Bring Me Down the House. That is such a... When I tell you Bring It Down the House is one of my favorite movies, it is one of my favorite movies. Um, so yeah, um, when Cooley Tip is like, oh, you want to say that you a boyish? And be like, man, you gray. You got gray hair. <laughs> so yeah, you know, he's kind of giving real silver fox. And definitely there was a lot more, you know, uh, chemistry between Sutton and him. She definitely was interested and, you know, he's like a little karaoke buff. So, you know, such just like, I hope this goes somewhere. And I hope it does too. Because it is clear. It is clear. Okay. What is going on in Sutton's mind these days. So I'm trying to get there. Okay. She, she trying to bust it wide open. Then I tell her bring it back. Bust it, bust it wide open. Then I tell her bring it back. <laughs> That's what Sutton was. She's trying to make it be making with the good knees. <laughs> Um, so how about they can do a full split? That's what Sutton's trying to do. So hopefully, you know, Sutton, you know, he ends up there. So they make it to, I think the place is called Ojai or something like that. It was very beautiful winery, um, you know, have lunch and all the things. So at the table, um, they, um, had this little card game. It's kind of almost the same card game that when they were in Vegas. And I kind of like the questions and things that it, um, that it has or just like it it was a lot more break the ice type of card game um so one of the questions was or one of the things was oh to lick somebody's toe and during was like girl I ain't licking your foot and so Kyle puts her foot up and Sutton's like I'll do it so 
it was like a good jokey moment. Everybody like definitely was choosing to have fun and just go with the vibes. So, you know, Sutton, of course, is thinking like, this is what I miss about Kyle. You know, she's really fun to be around. And, you know, with this group, where as I say, it's like work hard, play hard, where it's like for us, it's fight hard, play hard. Because it's like, although they fight, they still do have a good time with each other at like moments like this. Um, so yeah, Sutton was just kind of like, that's why she struggles with Kyle. But yeah, she ended up doing that. Um, uh, Doreen and Kyle end up, I guess, giving a play-by-play -play of what Suzerine is, okay? It ain't nothing to cut that off. They was on the ground, snip, snipping, <laughs> snip, snip, <laughs> on the ground, giving a for a play-by-play a, a -play because Kyle basically asked, um, just randomly after everybody got done licking toes and putting tongues in mouths and stuff, Kyle, as everybody's eating, just randomly throws out there, oh, would you ever date a woman? And immediately everybody's brain, you could tell, clicked like, oh, that's a peculiar question. It is definitely given Kyle's trying to dip her toe is she trying to see what it's like to dip her toe in the lady pond? She's slowly. Right now, Kyle's wading in the water is what it seems like. And so she's trying to throw a little bit of, you know, I think a hook, line, and sink out there to see how everybody's going to take it. I think she's kind of like, I don't know, she breadcrumbing. She's just, you know, dropping little bits and pieces uh, to maybe see how everybody's going to react, maybe. I don't know. But it's definitely giving... You know, Kyle's waiting in the water of her lesbian relationship. <laughs> you lesbian lovers. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, so yeah, everybody definitely was kind of looking at Kyle like, oh, it's giving juicy. It's giving Mauricio to Morgan. Cause that's what it's looking like. Um, but yeah, so, um, everybody definitely raise their eyebrows with that moment. So looking at you with my good eye, Kyle. Um, and so what else happened after that? Um, I think they left. It was like a, a day trip. Um, yeah, Anne-Marie, she ended up kind of having somewhat fun with the girls, but Anne-Marie, girl, it's still not, it's not clicking. It's, it's just not clicking. Um, so the next scene, Dorit is with PK and y'all know Dorit has this PTSD from this, uh, woulda, shoulda, coulda, um, robbery. You know, the question is still out there and if it was a legit robbery or if it was, you know, given to be movie robbery, y'all drop down in the comments. Y'all believe in the robbery? Y'all believe in the, the antics? <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, she basically wants to talk with this therapist to try to get PK to understand what it is like for her, essentially. And, you know, PK is trying to figure out the line between PTSD and Dorit just being in her, her controlling ways or living in her anxiety and using that as an, ex and kind of using PTSD for the excuse of acting a certain way. Like that's what I feel like PK is kind of feel like Doreen's doing sometimes. Like she's acting a certain way in a situation, but then using the PTSD as the scapegoat. And so I think PK is trying to, that's why he's asking questions because Doreen got offended when he asked the question. I forgot what it was. He was like, well, how am I supposed to know, you know, in the moment? He's like, sometimes I believe it's PTSD and other times I just think it's, um something else and so Doree looked at him like uh and he was like and she was like see why would you you know take a jab like that and even the therapist you know stood up for, for PK she was like no she's like I think he's genuinely asking but for Doree it's gonna come across a little rude because PK is going to ask the question literally in the most blunt form and Doree is one of those women that wants shit sh sugar-coated okay she goes roundabout way and PK's like, land here, get to the point. And that, I think, throws Dorit off sometimes because she likes to um, rose-colored, you know, glasses, you know, type stuff. She likes to put the, the rose-colored glasses on and live in that world. But 
PK's like, I don't know where, where, where it is, you know? So he's like, for me, you know, I'm trying to show support. And, you know, I planned this day. And he was like, I'm not going to lie. I kind of felt like I got an F you because every single step of the way she was being complicated, you know? The kids, the kids, the kids. And, like, the kids are good. Like, to think that he wasn't going to be able to handle that when you want him You've always said that you wanted him to step up and do things like is a little contradictory, you know, and then at the dinner, you wanted to get onto him about how, you know, oh, it just doesn't, I, I just, it just, um, you think this just shows up, it takes work. And it's like, yeah, Nari, I will understand you want to look good. Like she was so controlling of, I remember like of the dressing situation and oh, this dress, this and that dress that, well, we need the bronzer. And it's like, girl, sometimes just make do with what you got. Like I just, Nari would drive me crazy, honestly. And you know, PK talked about how Dorit's become a little more high maintenance. Um, you know, in general, uh, when you're in a relationship, you have to be able to admit when you're wrong and Dorit don't know how to do that. Um, Dorit is definitely one of those people that you just stop the argument because she's just not, she, she's going to go in circles with you. That's just the truth. Um, and so I think PK lets Dorit win half the arguments because he's just like, I'm not going to go back and forth with you. But, you know, Dorit, if support from, okay, after, you know, the, the robbery, he's gone in London and things like that. And so she's like, when I call you, you know, I need that support and things like that. And so he's just kind of like, you got to have to explain it to me because I, I don't know. Like, you're saying support, but support how? And so he's telling her, like, at the end of the day, like, you have to communicate and let me know because I don't, I'm not, you know, educated on this. Like I, I just, I just, he's got to find a way to navigate it too. Just like Dorit, you're trying to find a way to navigate it. Um, but yeah, PK definitely threw out the, the chips on Dorit letting this, letting everybody know that girl, you lack accountability. You don't know when I meant when you wrong. And I do think Dorit has now used fashion as her control center because clothes I can pick that I'm in charge of that like her look like that's where Dorit feels most in control of her life is with you know fashion and I get to be control of how I look how I move you know that's why I think Dorit hones in on that so much and is so you know um is so anal about those things and is so um the word is controlling like She's so in, in charge of those things. And I think that's kind of like how she feels, you know, that's like her safe spot because outside of that, she lives in nothing but anxiety and like kind of low-key self-sabotaging and creating chaos because of her anxiety. And it's like, you have to work on that. <laughs> you gonna have to work on that. Um, so yeah, um, Garcelle, she has a little little day with her sons. They um, come back from being at their dad's house. She was cooking lasagna and the boy gets out a bowl of cereal. He was like, what? I need this on the snack on. She looked at him like, Nico, you know, to see me make this goddamn lasagna. But, you know, she was talking to them about college and, you know, them leaving soon because they're sophomores. So they only got two more years. That one son, Jax, he was ready to go. She's like, oh, I'm going to miss you. Like, she's like, you look like you don't care. He straight up was like, and don't. <laughs> he was like, and don't. That that one, Jax, I tell you, that's 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 a different one right there. But you got to respect it. Um, so then Jay, y'all know lover boy, he, um, you know, he's lost in Ashlyn right now. Speaking of Ashlyn, you know, Garcelle brings up to the other son, was like, oh, you have your brother. He had some nerve to ask me about Ashlyn staying in the night. And Jax was like, oh, really? Like, what y'all going to do? He was like, watch movies, cook. And then the one brother was like, have sex. <laughs> and the other brother was like, no, he was acting like all so shy and coy and laughing. And Garcelle was like, well, since you brought it up, then let's go ahead and have the birds and the bee conversation, which is a very, you know, poignant conversation that at some point some parents have with their children. 
Especially like we know like in the black community, sometimes literally there is no such thing as, you know, um, a, a, a birds and the bees conversation with your child. Literally as kids, all you get told is don't you bring no baby back. And if you a girl, it's like, don't be fast. Like that's automatically the, like the thing for girls, especially. And then for boys, it's like, don't knock nobody up. But at the end of the day, um they 15 16 years old kids is out here you know dipping in and doing it and unfortunately with the way pedo is now these days it you know sexual education is super important and yeah i hate to break it to you garcelle like all she keeps saying is don't give me no grandchild do not give me no grandbaby and it was so funny because jack's boy jack's put it all out there he snitched on his brother he was she was like no and she's like uh because he made a joke about having a grandkid and she was like no and he said well shoot you ain't gotta worry about me i ain't the one having sex and then the brother turned the way of the brother <laughs> the way of the <laughs> The way Jade looked at the brother, you could tell in the back of his mind, he was like, you good. Like, why you throw me out there like that? Um, but yeah, you know, wrap it up, be safe. Um, you know, parents, all you can do is educate your child and hope that they listen. Um, yeah, that's all you can hope. So it's time for um, that ceremony of life um, for Kyle's friend. This story is just so super sad. You know, she had a best friend since, I think she said like seventh grade or second grade. And she ended up taking her own life. And that's definitely gotta be a hard loss because you can kind of in your mind justify like an accident or somebody getting, you know, um, taken out you know by somebody else like but when somebody takes their own life like Sutton said because y'all know Sutton she lost her father um to him taking his life as well and so she gets it and so she just remembers like all the questions and guilt she had because she actually was supposed to be at the house and she was like me being late you know I wonder had I been there you know, she's like, she felt guilty because of that. But at the end of the day, no matter how much you're thinking, like, well, why would they? What, like, what could it have been? You just will never know. The funny part about Sutton, though, when Sutton, she was like, I was a daddy's girl. I miss him. Man, Sutton mama was like, F him. <laughs> she's like, I don't miss your daddy one bit. Her daddy must have been hell on wheels. Hell on wheels. Because the mama said, I don't give a damn. <laughs> um but yeah so morgan y'all know morgan way her and teddy all they all rolled together and so um yeah they all rolled together and y'all know teddy she's back as the net garcelle made a joke oh what's up she's like yeah the net is back um i did not like that suit color of garcelle's i just didn't like it i just didn't like it like the suit was cute i made i just wish it was a different color um but yes yeah, so morgan wade y'all she's actually a really good singer like you know when somebody said oh they sing or whatever i love her tone the raspiness like she actually um sounds like talented and so she's doing the run through and kyle's just mesmerized um you know everybody's showing up dorit shows up um um Anne marie she actually looks cute um, and so Kyle does her speech and, you know, the mother's there, of course, I'm sure that's hard for her. And, um, after her speech, you know, Morgan gets up there and sings the song. Um, and so this is where Anne Marie start bringing up, uh, Sutton's throat again. So she, they were talking, Garcella and Crystal, and she was like, you know, way to, you know, change the subject. Sutton and her small esophagus. When she said that, both Crystal and Garcelle was like, like, girl, for real? And so Garcelle was like, why do you care? And that really is the thing, Amory. If you want to go back and forth with Sutton, this ain't the way to do it. Like, this is not the way to do it. So now she's bringing it up. And she's like, I got to talk to all the people in the office, all the doctors. And they're saying, oh, the small esophagus is only... Um, 
it's not the actual, you know, uh, diagnosis. It's a symptom of something, possibly, you know, like eating disorder. So Crystal's like, so you saying she got an eating disorder? She's like, no, that's all I'm saying. And Crystal was like, bitch, that's what you said. Like they rewind and it was like, that's definitely what you put out there. Um, and I think Anne-Marie said ain't what you want. It really ain't what you want. And so Anne-Marie is just determined to, I think she feels like she needs a valid reason to go after Sutton. And so your MD qualifications is going to help you do it. But this, this Marie, mm -mm. not on duty, not on duty. So Garcelle lets Sutton know she go over to Sutton like, girl. <laughs> now the way Garcelle did it was messy because the, she put so much stank on it when she was like, girl, Anne Marie coming for you. I would say Anne Marie approached her like she was coming for Sutton, but she definitely was still, let's just say, picking at the scab. And so the way Garcelle was like, girl, Anne Marie coming for you, I guess like you could have had that conversation another day, Garcelle. But here go Dorit. Oh, Garcelle, doing what she does. She, you know, strikes a match and walks away. And it's like, Dorit, but you do the same thing. You literally do the same thing. Um, uh, that's literally what you did between Erica and Dorit when when Sutton was on that ass. You literally go turn to Denise. So Denise, did you talk to Erica yet? <laughs> she was like, no, Dorit, I didn't. And it's like, girl, don't be trying to bring that mess mess over here. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's kind of where the episode ended, you guys. Um, Mauricio didn't show up, and so that definitely has people kind of looking like, well, damn, like, this isn't a good look, you know. And then Kyle definitely gave, did a giveaway when she was like, oh, you know, had this been a couple more years ago, uh, a couple years in the past, you know, I would have leaned on Mauricio for emotional sp support. So kind of what she's saying is, I don't look. For Mauricio for support anymore like she clearly it's Morgan right now and Morgan and her is sharing fruit and shit and it's definitely giving like I said Kyle's she wading in the lesbian waters okay um so yeah that was Beverly Hills y'all tell me what you feel about the episode how do you guys feel about Anne Marie joining the clique um do you guys feel like Dorit is ever gonna understand her Karen ways um, do you guys, how do you guys feel about PK and his interpretation of her PTSD? Um, and yeah, that's it, you guys. I appreciate you for tuning in. I'll catch you later. Bye.